Good morning. It's Devin. This is Homeschool House Calls. We are on day three, no, day four of our boot camp. We had a break over the weekend. Today we are back with how do I schedule and lesson plan. It's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of information today. I don't know what I was thinking trying to put them together, but um. First, I want to remind you, if you missed my birthday announcement on Sunday, there's a lot of sales going on in our shop and you can grab and go watch that video or shoot me a message and I'll tell you everything that's going on. But my birthday was Sunday and my shop has everything is 51% off. But, you know, that's not what today's about. Today is about lesson planning and scheduling. So anyway lots to cover but good morning mamas i see y'all starting to pop on um i had a great weekend birthday weekend my hair is not usually straightened but um i'm going to the beautician this afternoon and i didn't want to have to wash it you know it's always better to not have your hair washed when you go to the beautician so anyway so but i straightened it today i'm going to start transitioning this um crazy gray up in here something new so you'd have no idea what tomorrow i'll look like <laughs> but anyway so let's get started okay so this is our subject today how do i schedule and lesson plan these are actually two different subjects that go together and we're going to go over them this won't be real fast i promise i, I this is not um this is a lot. There's a lot of information. This is actually probably something that's better to do in two or three days. But boot camps can't run two or three weeks. That's just how it is. So scheduling and lesson planning. The first thing you're going to have to do is to take your state laws into account because we always want to be compliant. Um, Alabama is very lenient where I am. I always use that as my example because that's where I live. If you don't live there, you need to go back to my first workshop last week that went over state laws and where to find your state laws. Um, homeschool Legal Defense is usually where I send people. They have a really great summary. You can probably find stuff other places, but I always, if I take stuff off the internet, I try to, you know, go two or three different other places to make sure they all agree with each other. So anyway, so if you're in Alabama, we are got, we have lenient laws. Our only, we, submit a, submit our, our original paperwork and we have to take attendance so that's pretty much it we need about let's say 140 180 days that's about all we do in alabama there are other states that do not have that other states will have subject requirements they might have our requirements so take your laws into account because that's going to come into play how you schedule if you live in a lenient state, you're going to have a lot less to worry about when you start going through scheduling and lesson planning. If you live in a very busy, more controlled state, you just you just need to know. So that's where you start. Look at your laws. So anyway, yeah. these are my don't you like that I have talking points that we can stay on track? <laughs> um, when you talk about scheduling, you're actually talking about two different kinds um, most people may not re realize, realize that they do go together but you have to handle one before you can handle the other so the first one when you're talking about scheduling and if you're watching send me a send me a um good morning let me know let, you know, let's get chatty it's easier for me to teach if you're chatty if you're not talking then i don't know if i need to expand more on something or if i need to talk less about something so the more you talk to me the better it gets okay so the scheduling there are two kinds that go together the first one is scheduling your year out this is going to be when you have your school days, when you have your holidays, your vacations and your breaks, there are different. I see. I see now y'all talking good. Gail, be chatty. I like chatty. <laughs> I have to go back on the way the stream yard works. I have to go back and, and push buttons to go to different places. But anyway, so when you're talking about the first one, you are scheduling your out. You're out. You're choosing what days you're actually teaching. Um, 
there are actually that seems simple you're like oh i have 180 days but it's a little bit more involved than that it's kind of weird the other one is your daily schedule when you're going to teach what um and do they go together they do go together so yeah i already said that so anyway so there are different types of the yearly schedule and we're going to go over some of those um there probably i won't go over all of them because there's always somebody somewhere inventing something new and that's okay we like that i love when homeschool mamas invent things it's just it's exciting to me okay so there's year-round schooling which means that you're taking breaks when you're convenient what's convenient for your family this is a really popular one and you hear you hear most of the time you hear people say do you traditional school or do you um year you know year-round schooling most people say they're doing year-round and basically it does not mean that you are teaching 350 something days it is means that you are taking breaks when it's convenient for your family we did this for years i would take a month at christmas and new year's and i would take a month at um spring break that's pretty much what we do different um variations on that um the re one of the reasons is because i live in south alabama on the gulf coast most of our summers have 90 degree days and higher with 100 percent humidity no one wants to be outside it looks like it's a beautiful place to live and you're like oh my gosh i'd be at the beach all day long no you don't want to be at the beach in July and August. It's miserable. <laughs> well, maybe not. It can be nice if you're in the water, but then you get summer. So I'm like, you know, year round schooling works for us because spring is beautiful. Fall is wonderful. You can go to the beach up until October, November. Octo end of October, it might start getting chilly, but you know, it's a beautiful time, beautiful place to, to school year round. Then there's traditional schedule where you're following a public or private school schedule. Um, my kids wanted to do that one year because their cousins would get off in the summer. We tried it. It dissolved into a mess because they had not been used to that. So that's another schedule that you can do. There are calendar schedule, which I actually have begun to think that I might do this with my youngest. It's going from January until around July um it's called i had not heard about this one until about two years ago that there are people who will start in january i think it makes sense because between thanksgiving and new year's there's a lot of holiday in going on i think it makes a lot of sense and it's a good time of the year for us to be free to have fun there is sabbath schooling where they're doing six weeks of teaching and one week off um that works actually we're begin we're a co-op we're being involved with in the fall we'll be doing sabbath schooling i didn't realize that's what they were doing but six weeks on one week off gives everybody a break you get time to um clean up deep clean your house get everything back in order so and there's some other ones there are five days a week four days a week three days a week i have done that one before um you might do a university style block schedule where you're covering a whole whole subject in a, one semester and then moving on that works really really i think really great with high school middle school high school um, i would not ever do that with math or language arts but other subjects i've seen some parents who have taught um that's more of a blocked style schedule but i mean these are ways you can organize your family and organize how you're going to teach so let's see some things that will affect your decision on which one you use you could um it might be your extracurricular stuff that you're doing like if you're in football or baseball or basketball that may affect your schedule your your year schedule outside classes if you're taking stuff maybe you're doing early enrollment and your your teen is going to the university that would have affected your family's work schedules let's say you your husband has swing shift and you want 
you know, he needs to sleep certain days and you need to be, I have, I know a mom that would leave the house while her husband was sleeping to keep the little small kids. So, and that when he was working, you know, how thing they're just organizing on, on a swing skip shift um, or your child's um, school uh, you know, work schedule. Um, I have two teens that work now and it does affect how we do our school and when we do our school. Then you're going to go into the daily schedule. And if you have questions and I'm going too fast, I do tend to get too fast when people are not talking to me. I can let me know. I can circle back around. Then with daily scheduling is going to involve what you cover during that day to day schooling. So first thing when you're scheduling, you're picking out what days you're actually teaching. Then you're going to move to your daily schedule and how you're teaching that when my let's see I, I brought my stuff over here i actually brought stuff over here except i have to move everything around and move the camera around let me see when my kids let me pull it on here without pulling everything off the the this <laughs> i have a stack when my kids were really young i read a book this is the book i even now i periodically go back and read it when i first bought it i read it every year before i started scheduling because she was so awesome with breaking down scheduling and i do not go this in de in detailed no i just picked up the wrong stuff picked up the wrong stuff this is how i go this is how i roll people anyway i can tell you the name um let's see let me see did i write it down yeah okay so um anyway so way back in the day when i started homeschooling and i needed help learning to schedule i read a book called manager of manager of their homes by terry maxwell she is fabulous if you ever watched the duggars and saw them with their big um sticky note board she's the one who kind of taught them how to do it this best book out there and it's called manager of, let's see i got it let's see right here manager of their managers of their home by terry maxwell i would read it yearly when i began scheduling now i don't need it but i do period periodically refer back to it because it's so well what um written out i can't i don't like inventing the wheel um, I could write something, but um, why when somebody else did it? And it's very affordable and it comes with all the things you need to schedule out. So you start out, you're writing everything you have to do. That is wild when you write down everything you have to do. And then you're plotting out what times that what are set in stone, what's not, what can be moved around. Um, and that is how I started learning to schedule. Um, also, before I get too much further, let's see, let me get rid of that one. Um, I found a great blog post on, let's see. Overestimate how much can be. Yes, I do that too. You have to kind of put yourself a little bit of wiggle room in there. Um, only put one task at a time. I am very good with overestimating what I what I can do in a, in a, a set time and it, it can be. So you have to be very realistic and really think it through and realize that if you don't get everything done, it's OK. You can move it to the next block. I do a lot of block scheduling and we'll come back to that. Um, let's see. Do I have that on here? Yes, I do. But we'll come back to that. I don't want to miss anything. No, actually, it's next. <laughs> but um, so block scheduling is like you're setting a block. Let me see. Do I have my? OK, let's see if you can see this. OK, this is kind of what it you see my my thing. I put a picture last week. See my blocks. Um, I may have to do a video just on that. Um, I do block scheduling now. I have because I work, this works best for me. When my kids were little, I would schedule every subject out. And when the I mean, each kid had a schedule. And if like if they were on computer, I might switch them. It was very intricate. I don't have to do that now because they're teens. The only one I really have to schedule is Lisey. And she has a block of two hours 
every day. Um, but the thing is, is with blocks is like if you use the sticky notes, if you have something change, you can move those blocks around. It's like if Gabriella, Gabriella and Olivia have blocks too, but they're only twice a week. But let's say Gabriella has to work. I can move Olivia's over in Gabriella's and I can move those blocks around. So it's like almost like Legos. You can move them around and, and make them fit where you need them to fit which is how block scheduling works. That works for me because I work from home. I have a set time in the morning that I work. Then Lisey wakes up. We do breakfast. We do school. That's her block. Her block starts right after my workshop. She's eating. We'll eat breakfast when we finish here. We eat brunch in this house. We eat brunch and dinner. So, well, she may eat something, but she'll get it you know, out of the fridge. But we'll do it's our time together. Um, that would not have worked when I had four littles. It works good now. Um, then I lost my train. I thought people bring me back. <laughs> but so that's one. I don't want to go too in detail with block scheduling. We can come back to that. I won't, I won't cover everything today if I get stuck on my block scheduling. Okay, so there's block scheduling where you have sets blocks of time for different subjects. That works for my house now. My big kids are not quite on block scheduling. They manage their own time because they are teenagers and I make them. We actually, with my teenagers, we have business meetings on Tuesday evenings and they do school Wednesday through Saturday. Um, they have a list of what they have to do. We talk about it on Tuesday. They have check marks. We use Milanote. We talked about this before. Lisey is not on that schedule. She is not old enough to manage her own own time. Um, even Olivia, Olivia is being taught to manage her own time. It is not something she has accomplished yet. She's getting better at it, but I tend to check behind her every day. Um, my son, when he was still in school and still doing school with me, even up until senior year, I had to check every day with him because he did not stay on track. Juliana and Gabriella, I could go two or three weeks and they would probably be perfectly fine and get everything done. But they have the behavior of if I don't get this done, I'm guilty. <laughs> And I have to I have to confess my sins to my mother. Okay, that's that's their behavior. Olivia, um, I don't know that she'll ever be that way. She's a lot like Cole. So we have our times where I check behind her and make sure she gets her stuff done. And if I'm not diligent, then she's behind. And Mama, has, it's it's Mama's fault because Mama, it, it ultimately I am responsible for my children. That's how it is. And if they don't get it done and I have not caught it, then they're not done. So, you know, it's a balance and it, it works very well with us for right now. Um, next year may be a little different. There's some of the subjects that I'm going to do a little bit and be a little bit more hands on with. We outsource a lot with my teens, but mama works. So that is what works for us. Lisey, not there yet. Um, we do school together. She has a two hour block and we sit. So that's my block scheduling. Um, loop scheduling. This is a whole nother thing. This is something that I might have had like when my kids were little. See, we got stuck with that block scheduling. Block scheduling is probably what you see most with most parents. Um, loop scheduling is more of more along the lines of having a routine is what it seems like to me. I have not seen it in practice. I've heard people doing it. We've talked about it. Loop scheduling is you're going through a list of subjects that you need to cover during the week. <clears throat> you might have a morning basket. You pick up one that you won't cover. You know what you want covered. And I think it works really well if you're combining subjects. I did when my kids were little. So um, I had I thought I had a blog post with, um, with that. No, um, Pam Barnhill, um, morning, but she makes, she has a, what is the name of her? She has a podcast called Homeschooling Solutions. She has some really great articles on loop scheduling and, and block scheduling because those are the two ones that you will usually see for your daily schedule. Again, you have to go back to your state laws. You need to know what they're requiring of you. 
um, if they require certain subjects to be covered during the day, then you've got to know that loop loop you can, but you can do them with both. But I think for me, block scheduling works better. So that is going over all the scheduling. If you have questions, let me know, shoot me a comment in the bottom. I can answer it or find resources for you. On to lesson planning. Lesson planning is so much fun. I don't have anything majorly organized with this because this is an in-depth pro. Um, um, this subject is really the one that started my new program that starts in the fall. How do I homeschool the consulting package uh, that I announced Sunday? This is the what really started that because it is so in-depth. I can give you some, we'll give you some tricks and tips today, but the program will go in detail and I will walk through you with lesson planning. Um, make sure you ask me questions. If you have any questions on that, I'm really excited about that. We're going to go one month. We'll do scheduling and go in detail. The workshops in there are going to be different than the workshops that we have in the group. The workshops in the consulting package are going to go in depth and I'm going to follow the workshop to completion. And then we will have group meetings to go over it so that you can apply what is in the workshop. It's going to be much more de in detail than what we can do in this group in our limited time frame. I'm excited to it's a challenge. It will be exciting. I'm excited. But anyway, lesson planning. It's so much fun don't ever get overwhelmed with lesson planning. Picking out curriculum is fun. Lesson planning is fun. And then even moving it into um, action is fun. We can have fun with this. So anyway, so before you lesson plan, you need to have your curriculum. Um, now, what I thought I had grabbed was this is movie guides. I picked up the wrong stuff. Okay. So when you pitch, choose your curriculum, you need to remember a couple of things. Most curriculum written by homeschool families for homeschool families will have a suggested lesson plan. I love this. I, when I started homeschooling, there was not a lot of curriculum written by homeschoolers for homeschoolers. That was, that was way back in the day mostly what you had was publishers. Um, you would have things like a Becca, which was written for a public school, private school. And then that when homeschooling became a thing, they, they made guides, but it's written. It's not, wasn't written by homeschoolers for homeschoolers. There's a difference. So when you choose a curriculum, realize that most curriculum that is written for homeschool families will have a suggested lesson plan in it. If they are written by a homeschool family, it'll even have more in it. So, but you don't always buy, <laughs> you don't always get it. Sometimes you'll find something at Goodwill for cheap. And you know, I, I get cheap. I love cheap because I have five kids. Many, many years I may do, with reusing curriculum or getting stuff from Goodwill, there are ways that there are ways that you can lesson plan, even if it doesn't have a suggested lesson plan in there. Now, um, Apologia, if you get their, what is it called? Their, their workbooks, there's a suggested plan. Most curriculum will have it. But if you don't have it, I'm going to show you what I do. So, Let's say this is American history. Um, this is for Olivia in the fall. She's going to go through this. We're using it as a spine. There are, let's see, 47, 47 chapters. Each chapter I will do in a week. Some I may do two chapters actually with this one. I think I actually, I told her when we were looking at, we're doing two chapters a week. So in here, she has one chapter. And then at the end, there is a check your knowledge. That's going to be her test. That's where mama, mama finds out has she been reading. This is my spine. 
So what I'm going to do is I take down and I write what I wanted to read on what day. Then I start pulling in other stuff and dropping it on a spreadsheet. But you can do that. So you can make your own plan. That's that's perfectly reasonable. You don't have to freak out. Some will. Let's see this one. This one is 180 days. This is our grammar. It's just one page a day. So you can. I have taken textbooks and if I don't make sense, send me a comment. Um, I've taken textbooks that I found that were public school and I've gone through and written down the number of days and divided it by the days I want to teach. And I said, OK, I need to have this many days. And then I would go for I would usually lesson plan for like a month at a time. I would never go all year long. I have friends who will go all year long. But with five kids, things have to be adjusted. Sometimes I would do a month at a time. And so then I would go and look and say, OK, here's the page number. OK, this is not a natural break of what's going on. And I would go forward and I would I would make adjustments. And then, then you can pull in YouTube videos and worksheet videos and then you just keep them all on a spreadsheet or whatever you want to use so that you know what you're covering that day. So lesson planning can definitely be done if there's not a plan. But if you have a budget and you're buying curriculum, I love finding one that has a, has a plan already done. So yeah, let's see. Let's see. And OK, any questions? I know I just threw a whole bunch at y'all. No questions? None? Because I'm going to wrap up. We, we I mean, I threw a bunch at y'all. That was a lot. But anyway, so lesson planning, not hard. It's just a matter of most curriculum will have it. It's making sure it fits into what your state requires. Most will without any major problem. Um, and you can totally do it yourself and let me know what I can answer and what I can help you with. Today is, has been fun. I love I love um, lesson planning. I love scheduling. That's some of my favorite stuff to do. Tomorrow is all about homeschooling high school. We're going to be all about high school tomorrow. And on Thursday is where to find help when you need it. So that is. Oh, and Friday we have a new one. We're going to have an interview with um, I believe her name is Brianna. She um, has testing. It goes along with everything we talked about last week in assessment. Um, she just contacted me this weekend and she has testing for homeschoolers and it looks pretty neat. So we're going to learn about it together. And on Saturday, we have some veteran homeschool mamas are going to talk about what do you do next when you when you get that last kid graduated. I won't be a veteran with no kids for a long time now, but I'm going to enjoy it because I mean, you know, eventually it eventually we graduate all those kids. But other than that, have a wonderful day. I will see y'all tomorrow. Let me know what questions you have and I will see you soon. Bye guys.